Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So tonight we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to go actually into some fairly deep alchemy and uh, explore some really subtle stuff um, and examine some of the process uh, that uh, is involved with, uh, with the things that we're doing. So, um, but first, uh, a question came up uh, uh, about when you're breathing and uh, when do you lift the perineum? So at the, uh, for, to make contact with the huyin. So the huyin is that, is the most negative point on the torso. And it's, it's at the, uh, between your genitals and your anus. And that's an energy point. It's, it's a very uh, yin energy point. And by breathing deeply with your diaphragm, so as you inhale, your diaphragm presses down on your internal organs. And ordinarily, that gives a signal to your intercostal muscles to expand your chest, which then allows your lungs to fill. Um, what we want to do is to actually calm that impulse, bypass that inner that chest expansion and to keep on going so that the pressure goes down and the diaphragm pushes down on the internal organs, which then massages them and it causes increased circulation and it activates what, you know, what we refer to as the Dantian or the sea of vitality in that lower abdomen. And you want to continue past that all the way down to the perineum down to, you know, that, that spot there where the wind hui yin is so that you can activate that energy point and which then it connects up the, the governing vessel with the connecting, the conception vessel and as well as the thrusting vessel. So three very important acupuncture vessels that are very important for your vitality. These things are happening anyway, but what we want to do is remove the, the limitations that we place on them by, by um, kinking the hose. So when we do that, we get, allow this vitality to, to go spread through the whole body and fill up and, and then it allows for an energetic um, health and vitality that is uh, characteristic of, of the internal arts. So, so just to the idea with the lifting the perineum is to, is it's not a muscular contraction where you're tensing like in a, in a Kegel exercise where there's a, you know, when you're trying to strengthen your pelvic floor by actually tightening the muscles, this is actually a very gentle thing, just like, just like a gentle lifting. And um, kind of like if you, uh, uh, you're trying to restrain from, from peeing you before you get to the bathroom. So you, you kind of lift on that and it, it, there's a constriction there, which is, uh, allows you to contact the, uh, that energy point. So um, moving on, um, what I wanted to, uh, to get into was how we uh, approach these things and um, a lot of it has to do with, with the mindset. So the, there's a characteristic way of thinking that is something that I addressed in, in um, Taiji Chuan through the Western Gate. And there is a, a dis, what I can call the Western Gate way of thinking. And that is that a, um, it's kind of influenced by science and philosophy as, as it's developed over the last couple hundred years, 300, 400 years in the West and uh, leading toward a scientific materialism where everything is seen as an expression of mechanics or materiality and how these atoms bash into those atoms and these muscles pull these bones, and et cetera, which is a, uh, gives one way of looking at what we're doing, but it is um, uh, very limiting if you continue to look that way. And one of the qualities of this 
Western gateway of thinking is something called um, binary thinking. And this is often the case that, you know, it's either or thinking that is, it's either yes or it's no. You're either a Democrat or you're a Republican. Either it's black or it's white. It's a, the, uh, there is this either or thinking, binary thinking. There are just two values in that system. And you're one or you're the other. And this is something that is characteristic of a lot of Western thought. And um, you're right or you're wrong. And so the... Uh, in the the Dallas way of thinking, there it's it's more there is some binary there. That is, you establish polarities, but there it's also a full spectrum thinking. That is, that hot and cold are not are, are two poles, but they actually are both aspects of the same thing. They're, they're aspects of temperature. They're part of the same system by establishing them as, well, you're either hot or you're cold. No, you're actually, there's a gradual scale, a full spectrum there where you go from hot to cold. And it, a lot of what determines whether you're hot or you're cold is your relationship to the temperature. So there is the event and you can say, oh, it is 68 degrees and depending on what you're doing and what you're wearing, 68 degrees may be hot or may be cold to you, depending on what's going on. So that is uh, the way of thinking. It's, a, it's a, a full spectrum thinking. And so much of what we're doing employs that. Where you establish poles, we talk about yin and yang, where yang is expansiveness and yin is contraction. And some people think, oh, contraction is bad because then you're, you're getting all tight and you're getting, no, no, contraction is just the, the, the bellows, you're, you take in the air, then you push out the air. So the, you know, you have the, the, this motion there and you can't do one without the other. So the, and in yin and yang, we have motion and stillness. We can, some people say, oh, well, stillness is the ideal. And others will say, no, stillness is death. And it's both. You can't have one without the other. Just as music, you, it's not just about a collection of notes. It's also about the silences between the notes where there is, there's space between the notes, which enables you to create a pattern, a sonic pattern that is interesting. If you have just a sustained sound, that's, uh, that gets kind of boring after a while. Uh, if you have sustained silence, that's kind of boring too. So you want to get, uh, you want to get both. So the same thing is, is, is employed in this, uh, in the way we're talking here, that is we're, we're getting both, it's a both and way of thinking. And it's a full spectrum way of thinking so that we, rather than just memorizing a bunch of things and going through a mechanical action that enables us to follow the leader, say, oh, I do my Tai Chi just like I think my, tai my teacher does. Okay, that's, that's nice, but so what, you know, you, maybe, maybe that, that's, that's okay, you know, but it's not going to take you to the place where you can own it, where you can do it. And to do that, we have to go inside when we have to explore the infinite variabilities in each passing moment. So that we peel away the surfaces and we get inside and we find infinity in each moment. And we, by climbing inside, we feel what's going on. When we're just looking at it, we're observers where that becomes objectified. It's something that is, it's out there. Even if it's, even if I'm looking at me and say, oh, Rick is moving his arm in this way. And that's really cool. But it's, uh, that's Rick observing Rick doing arm movement. And which is fine. 
and say, did I get it right? And I said, no, you didn't get it right because there's nothing there. There's nothing inside animating that arm. To do that, you have to actually climb inside and engage the mechanism and bring your attention, your intention, your presence to the moment. And it is that, it is then that we activate the energy. It's then that we bring Shen or spirit to the event. So, you know, two people can go through the exact same motion and to a casual observer, it looks like they're doing the same ward off with left arm, but this is empty and this is not. And a trained eye will be able to, to make that distinction. So what uh, we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna kind of look at this and uh, let's see if there's anything else there. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna explore some of these, these qualities and um, get into really the, the subtleties of them, the nuances. So before we go on there, give me a, uh, why don't we shift to, to gallery view and, and see if there's any questions of what we're talking about so far. How are we doing so far? Any questions or thoughts? Yes, good, 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 good. Everybody good? Okay, um, cool. So let's uh, let's play around with that because it's a um, um, once we go from Taiji as this fun little exercise that we do, and we make the jump to Tai Chi Chuan as a martial art, where you're actually not just feeling chi, but you're feeling jin. That is, the energy is being expressed through the body and directed by your awareness, your conscious intent. When we Once we make that jump, the, the bar of uh, the test of validity, it, it, it gets raised a bit. Because then it's, because uh, cheese happening regardless. So you, if you feel it, that's great, you know, and, um, uh, and that's uh, better than not. But to take it to that next level where you actually want to do something with it, bring it into your body, bring it into the world, use it as a way of enhancing your state of being, as well as your ability to do cool stuff. And that's where we have to raise the bar a little bit. So uh, uh, just giving you an example, we're gonna use a, a motion, very simple motion, and then we're gonna play around with that and and, uh, explore a little bit, but first I'd like to uh, uh, maybe do a little demonstration with that, and uh, so you can see. You want to give me a hand with this? Okay. So Maria's going to give me a hand with that, and uh, so the, the the motion is a very simple one. That is, boom. So if um, go ahead. So uh, why don't you put your Right leg forward, there you go, good. So if if you're, she's gonna do that, she's gonna to try to push me with that with that arm. I did you, it wrong? Well, do it, yeah, do it, do it, do it, what I, okay. <laughs> so if she just uses what we talked about last week, a kinetic chain, that is, is going from the, the, the legs, torso, arm, down here, all to, down, out, it, nothing's happening. She, she can't, the, the muscles, are not enough to make magic happen, okay? Or even budge the uh, budge the needle a, a little bit. So the uh, <laughs> but to be able to do this, we have to get the shoulder out of the out of the out of the way. And the shoulder is a, a big problem for a lot of people. A lot of people have shoulder pain because so much is initiated by the shoulder. So the the trick that we've uh, we developed here is first we want to establish energetic coherence by reaching with the index finger, okay? 
And we try to do that without engaging the shoulder, without tightening up the arm. So it's just, it's really just, just feeling that finger and reaching out with it. And what that does is it establishes an energetic connection throughout the whole system. And it also alerts the connective tissue system to activate the tensegrity of the system. That is the ability of the whole system to get that, that sinewy, um, whippy strength going and it connects everything up. So if we point here, and the next thing we do, we wanna, we wanna relax the shoulder by reaching, not lifting the elbow, but reaching with it, just reaching a little bit. And it's doing those, just those two things, I'm already gone. She already, just by doing those two things, the energy of the system is enough to cause me to be uprooted. We do it again and go ahead. And this time it's coming from the shoulder and nothing's happening. But this time she points, she feels the elbow, good. And now she's going to reach with her wrist here. She's gonna bend the wrist and reach with that and, and allow that to fill up. And automatically I start to go. I start to, I start to be uprooted. And this is because the energy is coming up and it's an expanding energy. Now we have gin. So the energy itself is, is nice, but it's not gonna do it without the body, without the body cooperating. So we have this, boom, she fills here and then just rotate the forearm so that we get this effect. And it's a very powerful effect with a minimum of physical effort. Go the other way now. So boom, you feel that? So the trick is how do I do this without activating the shoulder? Because that is such a deeply embedded <laughs> <laughs> process, a deep part of the program. And it's not something you can muscle because this, this, the muscles that are in the shoulder are just not strong enough to really do anything significant. But if you get it correct, if you line it up, then the energy comes down. We have gin and do it real slow. Boom, boom. So finger, elbow, good, wrist. And then, so notice that there's a sequence to this. If you don't follow the sequence, it's not like you memorize the sequence. The, the sequence just follows a natural route. And the, what I'm trying to, trying to, point out here is that you need to be able to feel from the inside that the effect that you're creating. So that right now, that is, that is creating the effect that she wants. That is, it's creating a gin. It's an uprooting quality to that, to that energy and that expression of the energy. So, and then go the other way, boom, elbow, point, reach it, that's it, that's it. And there you go. So this is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna walk you through this, thank you. And I'm gonna walk you through this. And we're gonna start by really getting the chi going. So I'll talk you through the, uh, through the, the three pillars. Okay, so begin with your feet heels together. Good. And feel the ball of your right foot. Set your right knee and spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the right leg and now turn to the right. Pick up the left heel and step out to the side. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the right and then turn, pivot on your right heel. So now your weight is 50-50. So we're gonna just very slowly activate the three pillars. And even though many of you have done this hundreds of times, now is the first time. It's as if you've never done it before. Because it is for me. I've done it thousands of times. 
and this time is the first time I've done this. That is, I'm engaging my body in a totally new unit of time. The radical present. I feel the balls of my feet. And I set my knees, relax and just set my knees, just slightly bent, unlocked, so that my weight is more toward the balls of my feet, kind of like I'm on a diving board. I'm gonna dive in and just for a moment, rock back in your heels and just feel what that feels like and notice that it's radically different the energy is radically different when you're in your heels. So go back to the balls of your feet as if you are going, you're preparing to, to dive in, or if you're, you know, you're in, in a sport or something like that where they, you know, you want to be in the, the balls getting ready. You're in a ready position. So your the weight of your feet, the weight of your body is spread throughout your feet. So you're feeling some in your heels, some in the outside of your foot, some in the inside, but you're focusing primarily on the balls. Feel the toes, kind of just touch the floor with your toes and feel that. And notice the liveliness that it creates in your feet. That you immediately start to activate a very powerful energy. You're opening the gates through the soles of your feet and accessing the earth chi. And reach for the crown of your head, tuck in the chin. So even as you sink down into your feet, you're reaching up with the crown of your head. And even if you've done this hundreds of times, now is the first time. As you do that, you also want to drop your sacrum. You drop your sacrum, drop your coccyx. There's a point there, the way Lou, which you want to drop down. And this, you do this by relaxing your lower back. And when you do that, you want to feel back into your feet and make sure you didn't shift back into your heels, because that's a very easy thing to do. So you make an adjustment and feel the balls of your feet again, reach again with your crown of your head. So you're reestablishing that. And as you're doing this, as you're standing there, feel your crown reaching up and your coccyx reaching down and feel the space being created between the vertebrae. You're lengthening your spine. You're creating more space. And this allows for the energy to move more freely, but also the cerebral spinal fluid, the blood uh, allows the nervous system to function better. It creates a supple spine. And if you do this often, your body will start to get longer. You'll get taller as you do this because you're creating, you're opening up the spaces between the vertebrae. Point with your index fingers. Feel, feel into your hands and feel the energy there. Feel the tingling, pulsing heat, the electricity. Your hands are your best barometer for a whole body energetic connection. If you're feeling that in your hands, then you're very likely plugged in. So we're feeling the earth chi coming up through the balls of the feet and the chi of the heavens coming down through the crown of the head. So the bai hui, the, uh, the, the point right at the uh, top of the head. So that's coming down. So you are becoming plugged into the big chi as you do this. Now you want to reach up slightly with the elbows, not lift, just Reach out a little bit, still pointing with your index fingers. And 
allow your muscles to relax. You've created a shape and now you're creating a, a relaxed muscles that allow you to trust the intrinsic structure of your body. The term is sum, when you're releasing into the connective tissue, releasing into the structure. So the motion we're going to do is to this. It's stupid simple, yet I'm going to make it really complicated for you by really focusing on the nuances, focusing on the sequence. Because if you do it the way that most of us will do it, that is, you're just pushing out from the shoulder, your arm will get out there, but it's not going to have any chin. And then you're just going to be relying on crude muscular force. So the, the quiet um, nuance that, that you're, you're, you're going to be focusing on is this is a way of working that opens the door for lots of other explorations. We're just picking this one because it's a real simple one, yet a miss is a mile. If you miss, it doesn't work. So what do we do? We point the index fingers. Just feel that. You feel the energy, feel the tingling, pulsing, feel your whole body connecting up. We have the big chi coursing through us. So that we're not just using the limited energy of our own bodies, we're plugging into the universal energy. We feel the, that index finger. And next thing you want to do is with your right arm, you just reach out a little bit with that elbow. Just, just you want to feel that. Just like you're kind of giving someone a little nudge, but so much, so little that no one would notice but the person you're nudging. It's like, like that. Now, reach forward and up with your wrist, your right wrist. Notice that my wrist is bent. So a real important part here is to not let go of all the other stuff that you've done. You're still plugged into the three pillars. You still have your, your index finger still getting you coherent. You're still reaching with that elbow. But what we've done, we've added this reach with the wrist. And notice, I'm going to do a turn to side here so you can see what I'm not doing is this. I'm not doing this. Okay. When I do that, I'm just activating my biceps muscles and I've lost it. There's no gin there. What I am doing is getting this point, elbows, reach with the wrist. So it's not just like that, it's forward and up. So you're, the energy is coming from the underside of the arm. There's an extension there rather than a contraction. So that's, that's a really key part of that. As you get that, boom, you're reaching there. So if someone were to grab your wrist, and you do that, you point, you reach with your elbow, then you reach with the wrist and you want to, and you can do it with yourself. You just wanna feel yourself filling against that, that, that your other hand, okay? You wanna feel yourself filling against that so that there's a connection that goes all the way down to your feet. You should be able to feel it in the balls of your feet when you do this. And that's because you're reaching rather than contracting. When you do that, then we have that 
the tensegrity goes through the whole body and ah, there's this connection. At this point, the person, if you have someone else you're doing that with, they're being uprooted just by that, just by that little connection there. You, they may uh, be able to thrash around a little bit, but uh, the reality is they're going, they're already in their heels and they're starting to go and they have to do something about that if they don't want to go backward. But we're just doing that. So we want to establish that contact there. So doing it again, you point, reach with the elbows and reach with the wrist. Okay, now you're going to rotate the form. This time we're going to turn palm up, rotate the forearm. Like I say, it's a, it's a, a very simple movement, but a miss is a mile. And bring your arm down. And you point, elbow, wrist, fill. Feel that resistance there. And you're not pushing the, the hand, other, your other hand away, you're just filling. That is, you're establishing contact so that there's a continuity of pressure there. And if, if say this were someone else and they're pushing in hard on my arm, then I would just balance that out by reaching and then rotate. And you reach out, you feel, Feel the connection there. So you're reaching out, feel the connection all the way through your body, all the way through your feet and into the earth. But there we have, we have a gin. Okay. And probably I can name the, the gins, but you know, that, but it's a very simple motion there where energy is being directed through the body, directed by consciousness. Did you have something you want to say? I was going to say, do the other arm. Okay. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do the other, other, other movement on this arm. Okay. So we go point, elbow. We're still using the right arm. Reach with the wrist. So notice that there's really very, very little going on here. The, as little um, effort as is needed to just to be able to hold that shape. I'm not doing this, right? I'm, I'm just, the shoulders relaxed, it's empty, and the energy is moving through all the way through my feet and into the earth. And then, so now I'm going to, so I'm filling here. This time I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna rotate my forearm so the palm is facing outward. So this is a, uh, a movement from from the Yong Cheng Fu, where you're you're going you're going from from uh, from here. This hand is coming up and it's going out like that. Okay, it looks like a dumb move. What's that, what's that about? Okay, but there is a Jin there that is quite remarkable, and it's also unexpected. It's something that is like, you know, it is not something that is ordinarily done. It's, and consequently requires your conscious engagement in order to make it happen, in order to activate that. So uh, let's do that one again. So here we are, finger, elbow, wrist, and reach with the wrist, and then rotate, palm out, okay? So notice that my elbow is rather high. It's actually my shoulder height. And my and ordinarily one would say, hey, you're probably kinking the hose here in the shoulder if you're doing that. But no, we're not. Why? Because we have engaged the tensegrity of the system and we're opening. So if I were just lift my arm up to this, yes, of course, my, my, 
my shoulder would be kinked. There'd be tense, muscular tension there. But as I do this, there is not. It's just, the, it's just the energy is moving through. So I'm not pushing with my arm, my arm, my shoulder, my, the shoulder is, is merely a conduit for this simple motion. Let's do the other arm. Okay, so I'll do this side. Here we go. Uh, so, three, point with your index fingers. What are we doing that for? To create a state of energetic coherence. Okay, finger, elbow. Feel the elbow. What does that do? That opens up the shoulder joint. It disengages chronic muscular tension in the shoulder by just reaching with that elbow. There you go. There we go. Okay. A little, little bright and shiny over there. So then I'm going to do, I'm going to bend the wrist and reach with the wrist so that I'm engaging that. I feel that resistance there from my other hand, which then allows me to feel into my feet. I'm feeling that that going all the way through my body, through my feet, into the earth. I'm still feeling my index finger. I'm still feeling my, my elbow. I'm still relaxing my shoulder. I'm feeling with my wrist as I push, as I'm, as I'm filling there. And so then I rotate the forearm so the palm is up. And there I am, okay, back down, Good. again, point the index finger, elbow, wrist, rotate, palm up, boom. Down. Finger, index finger, elbow, wrist. Feel the chi. And the repetition of this exercise um, would ordinarily just be mind numbingly boring if we we're just doing it as a mechanical exercise. But since we are engaging this in the radical present, there's no such thing as boredom. There's just now. And this is bringing you back into the radical present. It's taking you to the gap between thoughts. It's taking you into a super conscious state. And so now we're going to rotate palm out. And down. Finger. Elbow. Wrist. Engage. Good. Feel that and rotate and reach open there you go good so and down um, let me see if there are any questions so far on what we're doing we'll see what else we can throw into this anybody is this making sense? Is it uh, at all interesting? Is it, uh... <laughs> Valerie? This is a comment, not a question. Um, when testing that, you know, I would kink my shoulder. I would intentionally engage my shoulder and using my other hand, I could definitely push my hand down. Um, then I release the shoulder and, you know, resume and it ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Right. So beautiful. I like good. that testing. That was good. Good, good. So it, it helps if you have someone else there to work with. But if you if you don't, you you can pretend that you're the other person and and uh, test yourself because that it really makes makes a difference to to do that because you know if you're uh, I can I can feel that just like you're saying, Valerie. It's just like you know it it. But if I hmm, boom like that, it's like, you're right. It's it's. It's incredibly powerful and it's something you can feel in your own body. Cool. Anybody else? Lynn. Uh, again, a comment more than a question, but um, I never really felt chi in the underside of my arm 
to this extent, right? I mean, usually when you're expanding, you know, it, it's just, I'm suddenly like getting so much zoom right there on the other side, making the, making the arm more whole doing this, which I think is great. Super good. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Richard. Um, I just, I just think I found something for myself anyway, that when you were talking about <clears throat> as soon as you, as soon as you start to reach with your elbow, you're actually, instead of engaging your shoulder, you're pulling your shoulder open. Yes. Uh, and I, that, uh, that just did it like that for me. Fabulous. Um, Fabulous. So I think that's going to be really helpful. Right. Uh, so many people have trouble with their shoulders, particularly, you know, as they uh, get over 25 and uh, they, uh, they be able to consciously create space in your shoulder joint and to also get over the, the misconception that your shoulder is necessary for all these motions. It's, it's huge. It's life changing. Cool. Anybody else? Dennis, you're on, you're on, on mute, Dennis. I find that with the testing, that it's it's very subtle. It's not a forcing. It's 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 a feel. It's a feeling of filling. If you force it, and then then you just fill up your shoulder with muscle strength, and it's gone. It's right. very subtle. Beautiful, beautiful. Good, thank you, Jonathan. So, I know we haven't practiced push hands much, but it it does seem push hands is really receive hands opponent gets pushed from the earth or something. It's it, it's like, it's not like when Maria gets the energy, it's not that what's coming out of her, it seems so much as she's conducting you to the ground and you're pushing against yourself in a way that there's a free conductivity to the ground or how do you look at it? I don't look at it as an either or like that. It's a both and. So it's um, receiving is issuing yeah 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 so it's the both are happening simultaneously so you know when you you know we're advised to to intercept and follow the you know the the other person but that is what creates the the outgoing force as well it's so it is the the two systems merging into one system but a system where you let's say in a push hand situation, if I were doing it in a way that I wanted to uproot my partner, I, we, we would be sharing the same system, but I would say, yeah, but I'm driving the bus. You know, I'm, 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 it, it's my intention. I'm taking over the, the route for the system and right. the, systems, the, the bus is going this way now. And if the my partner then has to make an adjustment for the fact that he's being run over by the bus, and uh, he must he must now deal with that, and because it's coming in and it's coming in strong, you want something? Yeah, no, no, I was just remembering small changes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Good. Um, Sandy, you had something? Yeah, I thought it was really interesting um, when you supinate and pronate your hand there. Like how the, I could feel like my connective tissue was really different. That the two, uh, I think when it was the palm up one, I felt more like a spear, like a, a really piercing kind of gin. Whereas the the other rotation was more like a, a round, like around my like lat, kind of down and through that way. So I thought that was really it. Really changed the way. Two very distinct yeah. energies, aren't they? Yeah. Very, very distinct. Yes. Good. Good. Beautiful. Keith, you want to say, you want to say something? You're just, you're on mute. You're on mute. Dude, you're on mute. <laughs> you're still on mute. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So hey, you are. I, am I good now? You're, you're good. You're good. Okay. I will not you know, call you Ricky dog because you are a shaman or a magician or a mystic <laughs> or a brain science guy. But 
I'm related to this dude and it's good to know. Spent some close time and that's what got me plugged in from California. And uh, I'm just really enjoying the opportunity just to like to get learn more. Cool. And I'm a dummy, but I'm engaged. Good, good. Okay. Um, something that Sandy was talking about, this, you know, is different than this. Okay, I just want you to want you to feel it. Actually, stand up and I want you to feel this because this is really important. So get your three pillars in. Feel the balls of your feet. Reach with the crown of your head, the elbows. You know, you want to feel the fingers. Good, and you point. You feel the elbows, and then this time instead of bending the wrist, just pick up your hand and reach out. Just reach out with your hand without bending the wrist. And just feel that. Now bring that down and do it again. This time, feel the, feel the balls of the feet, the elbows, reach with the crown, point. And this time, reach with the wrist. And notice the difference when you do that. Huge. Huge, isn't it? So, so grab grab your wrist and give it some resistance. The same, and just so now now just reach out and give it some resistance. And notice what what that feels like. How immediately your shoulder wants to get involved in the in the in the in the action. Now do it and grab the wrist and bend the wrist and reach with your wrist and notice shoulder not 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 action, shoulder not happening at that point. And this is this is really key. So at the beginning of of the young form that I teach, it's we there's a arms come up like this with the with the fingers down, and then they open up after after you reach out like that. Try it this time with the fingers without bending the wrist, and just bring your arms up like that, and notice the difference. In the energy, come down, good. Now, this time you're coming up, bending the wrists and reaching with the wrist as you do that. And then filling in the fingers and notice what that does. These, are, these little nuances are what makes it work. Okay, and the same thing is true of this. If I come out and try to do that, it's different than if I come out like, like this. Yeah. If I come out like this and then rotate like that, is different than if, I, if I'm coming out and my hand's already reaching out because you can feel the muscles tensing up if your fingers are already extended, right? If you're coming up like that, you can feel the shoulder muscles activating immediately when you do that. If you bend the wrist and do that, not happening. It's not, uh, it's not doing the same thing there. So this to, we do with your left arm now. Feel, feel the fingers, elbows, feel the balls of your feet, reach for the crown. And this time you're bringing your hand up with the fingers extended and just feel that. Good, and then come down and then point, elbows, wrist. open. Besides which, besides being just so much more powerful, it also looks cooler, which is kind of neat too. So, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're coming up like this, boom, like that, that looks cooler than, than like that, right? It's, uh, it, so it adds a certain grace to the movement. So you, mm, you get, you kind of look all kung fu on it. And uh, so having that wrist action there is a big part of creating the gin. Okay, everybody get that? that, that anybody uh, have uh, not feel that? Is that cool? Everybody good? Cool, Dennis. 
Yeah, it seems like when you bend your wrist, you disconnect your elbow from your shoulder. When your wrist is straight, the force goes right into your shoulder. That's that's what I feel too. That's what that's what uh, my observation. So doubling back to the beginning of this conversation is, you know, I wanted to do these simple movements, not to just yet another thing to memorize, but to actually show how to investigate the simplest of movements, how to be able to determine, you know, is this working or not? How to make something that's not working work? How do we get there? And it has a lot to do with being able to feel from the inside. You're not just observing it, not observing yourself and saying, hey, am I doing this right? You know, it's, you know, am I copying my teacher exactly? No, it is, how does it feel? And then you, every, everything you do in your life can have that grace, that grace, uh, that soft power, and the confidence that comes with that. So that you don't have to bunch up because you're afraid the world is going to impinge on you more than you impinge on it. If you have that soft, supple power and that graceful movement with the central equilibrium and a whole, the vitality that comes with connecting up to the big chi, then you can kind of sit back and let life flow a little bit more. You can just say, oh, you're not, you do not have to do so much to control events when you know that, yeah, you can, you can flow like water through, uh, through life. And that takes away a lot of the rough edges, the sharp corners, and enables you to, to respond to things. Kind of back what Jonathan was saying about receiving. So you, yes, you, you are receiving life at that point. You're following, but at the same time, you are acting on life as, as much or more as life is acting on you. And that way you, you know, there's this, you know, it becomes a, a conversation with your, with your movements, a conversation with, with the world every time you, you know, brush your teeth, you know, <laughs> you know, you take a step, whatever, you're engaging in a conversation with, with life. And if you, can do it in the, that way where you bring your full presence to it as if you are doing it for the first time, then you immediately go into a super conscious state and that allows you to, to access energy and information that is not available to you in your normal state of consciousness. Okay, uh, anybody? Any closing questions, comments? No, nope, all good. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, you had something, Jonathan? You're, you're, you're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. There you go. It does seem you are, you have just different ways of creating a whole system. Even if you're doing the wrist or whatever, you're always bringing it back that it's a way into maintaining the whole system which is the most flexible that can receive and process and reciprocate and give back and not so that anything, I mean, maximally can be received because of that. that yes. You're always yes. seems to be working with that, that you're always yes. working from a whole system perspective. And the, and the underlying intent for all that is to engage life. Right. As much as you, as much as you can stand, engage life, and, and really, part, it's participatory consciousness. It is a particip participation in life as an ongoing conversation that just keeps on going. And it's the infinite game. Cool. Love you all. Thank well, you all so brother, much. Brother, brother, cousin <laughs> from another mother. <laughs> I really...
engaged me well. Where I'm <laughs> eating at the house and uh, not only did you do me good this last week, I really enjoyed uh, seeing the sage do his stuff. <laughs> nice to meet you, Keith. Yeah, Keith. <laughs> Come back. Nice to meet you. We <laughs> meet. Yeah, good night, all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. <laughs>